I'm Dr. Marla Shapiro, a past president of the North American Menopause Society, and I'm joined by Dr. Pauline Mackey, who is also a past president of the North American Menopause Society, and is a professor of psychiatry, psychology, and obstetrics and gynecology at the University of Illinois here in Chicago. So I want to ask you about these new depression guidelines that we have and why we needed them. People understand that there are hallmark symptoms of menopause like vasomotor symptoms, hot flashes, night sweats, and vaginal symptoms. But mood symptoms have received less attention. In recent years, there has been uh, numerous studies that have shown that if you follow women from the time they're premenopausal through the perimenopause to the postmenopause, there's an increase in depressive symptoms so that we now know that mood symptoms are part of what we call menopausal symptoms. And this is under-recognized. Definitely under-recognized. So what do the guidelines tell us? So the guidelines tell us, in fact, that this is normal. So on average, women do experience a worsening of mood during the menopausal transition. The good news is that very few women will experience what we call clinical depression or major depressive disorder. For most women, it's just a worsening of mood, just feeling a little sad, perhaps not finding as much pleasure in things that used to bring pleasure. But those symptoms typically don't meet the level of a clinical diagnosis. It's within the normal range. What the guidelines do is they help practitioners to first of all recognize this for women, to normalize it, and then also to say for whom is the menopausal transition a window of vulnerability for clinical depression. So that's a really important question. To be able to reassure women that this is likely going to get better is very powerful. But when you have a woman where it's not getting better, is there any way that we can predict who that woman might be who's more likely to move on to a clinical depression? Yes, here the research is pretty solid. The women who experience depression during the menopausal transition are by and large the women who have a history of depression prior to the menopausal transition. In fact, in one research study, 58% of women who had a history of a major depressive episode before the menopausal transition had another one during the menopausal transition. So those are women for whom the menopausal transition is a window of vulnerability. So that's one group of win women. But it's powerful to know that because yeah. you can, in a sense, maybe perhaps warn these women or, or advise these women that this may be something that happens and to come in about that. Yes, information is power for those women. Okay. Yes, absolutely. There's also a second group of women who experience what we call estrogen sensitive depressions. These are women for whom mood might have worsened in the last days of their menstrual cycle. Mm -hmm. It might have worsened in the postpartum or perinatal period. And now that they're transitioning through menopause, once again, their brain is expressing sensitivity to the fluctuating levels of, of estrogen and progesterone in their brain. So that's kind of a second group of women. Uh, there are fewer of those women, but they absolutely exist. Now, will those women also transition through this and it will be gone? Is it also just a window and then they will get better on their own? Yes, that's the good news. That's the good news. That's the very good news, yes. So for women who feel this way and have an indication for hot flash management, so they need to go on estrogen because of symptoms, they've tried everything else and they're finally saying, okay, I'll give this a go. What can they expect will happen to their mood? as a result of being on estrogen, particularly if they're estrogen sensitive? Yes, that's such, a, such an important question because the symptoms of depression overlap and co-occur with the symptoms of menopause. So vasomotor symptoms can disrupt sleep. What's a symptom of depression? Sleep disruption. Mm -hmm. So one asks, is a sleep disruption, sleeping too long, sleeping too little due to the menopause or is it due to depression? There is, of course, the phenomenon where a woman who has a night sweat will wake up. It will disrupt her sleep, right? So that can be a pathway to depression because sleep deprivation night after night after night after night will contribute to a worsening mood. In that case, treating the vasomotor symptoms can indirectly improve mood because it is improving sleep. However, interestingly, research does suggest that it's the depressive symptoms that precede the hot flashes in women who end up being depressed. So it's a bi-directional relationship. 
Sometimes the vasomotor symptoms come first. Sometimes the depressive symptoms come first. And if we have a woman who is hormone sensitive in terms of the history that she's given you that makes you think you're, you're estrogen sensitive in terms of your mood changes, but doesn't have hot flashes and night sweats, would one consider using hormones, estrogen therapy as a treatment for her symptoms? Probably not yet. Mm -hmm. However, there was a very interesting clinical trial published recently which showed that you can pre-treat women with hormone therapy and it prevents an occurrence of elevated depressive symptoms, especially during the menopausal transition, especially during the early perimenopause. So that study needs to be replicated, but the good news is that there are more and more studies taking place in this area of research to inform clinical guidelines for those women. And finally, what about the role of lifestyle changes in terms of mood and depression? So as part of these guidelines, we were fortunate to have the best experts in the world gather together and systematically review what we knew about herbal therapies, about acupuncture, yoga, exercise. And it turns out that there's one alternative lifestyle therapy that has very strong evidence for improving mood, including clinical depression, and that is exercise. So aerobic exercise, physical activity, intense physical activity actually does boost mood in randomized trials. For women with a history of depression who've responded to an antidepressant before and who are now experiencing recurrence of their depression, one doesn't want to choose the exercise. One wants to choose whatever therapy they were on prior that worked for them before. But it can boost the antidepressant effects of medication. And then also let's not forget about psychotherapy. Because for many women, Depressive symptoms are hearkened by changes in their relationships, children leaving home, uh, the adaptation to getting older, to not having children anymore, and all the hormone therapy and antidepressants in the world aren't gonna change those. So psychotherapy is a terrific evidence-based way of addressing those depressive symptoms as well. And last question, where can clinicians, practitioners of any sort, access the guidelines? The guidelines are free at menopause.org under our position statements. And in addition, there's a handout, a meno note for patients. Fantastic. Thank you so much. You're welcome.